they hit one easy, one a bit faster, and then the third one already like 100%. I said, hold on, hold on. Make sure you start slowly. Today, I'm gonna share with you my routine for warming up the syrups. Very light, very easy, relaxed. Feel the edge going down first, and I'm gonna try to drop that bracket low as I as I go up. All right, motion. Hi everyone, my name is Milan Krnjetin from Serbia. I'm founder of Ten Fitmen, and I'm a professional tennis player and coach. Today, I'm gonna share with you my routine for warming up the syrups and it's gonna be quite simple and kind of a quick video but maybe it will help you to kind of get some ideas how I do it and how I prepare to get started with my syrups. So ideally I would use the resistance bands right and this is especially you know before some matches before I'm gonna really go 100% but if I'm doing some serves like this now you know when I'm on court by myself I'm just gonna simply go through the warm-up like this uh, motion, warm up the shoulder, and I'm gonna go very light, very easy, relaxed at first, and then I'm gonna go a little bit faster, try to accelerate, and this is very important, I'm gonna try to focus on this kind of drop here, right? I'm gonna feel the edge going down first, and I'm gonna try to drop that bracket low as I, as I go up, right? And I try to imagine I serve, I try to go through the same, the same mechanics, the same rhythm, the same timing, right? If I do the serve, the toss, I'm gonna go here. And as you can see, it's very important how I make it fluid, right? Some players, when I tell them warm up shoulder, they do one, and then they stop. So it's important to make it continuous. So here, down, up. So you kind of go to the same side. You don't need to go here, even though you can still make it like a figure eight here, up and bound here, right? You can still do this way. And then again, you also want to focus on that correct racket drop, but also when you go up here, that you go edge first and then you pro make it here. Right? So. As I finish this physical warm-up of the shoulder, I'm gonna go for very easy couple of serves from this like uh, elevated position here. And I'm gonna go, that's like 10, 15%, literally just getting that ball over the net and feeling the nice momentum and the motion. And I'm gonna also follow through. So here. And this is very, very easy. Just getting this block. Yeah, here. Follow through the court. At this point, I'm not concerned with the targeting. I just go, let's say, middle of the box, like body serve. So, once I finish this part, as you can notice, I am using the platform stance first. So, from this position, I use platform stance and then. I'm going to do the same platform stance with the full swing, the full serve, with the, like this. You see, super easy, loose. I see a lot of players, they start serving and then they hit one easy, one a bit faster, and then the third one already like 100%. I said, Hold on, hold on, make sure you start slowly for at least 10, 15 serves and I tell them if I'm serving now and I want to go full power, I will need 10 minutes maybe at least to kind of really warm up and get ready for those big, big serves, right? So it's going to take a while, you really have to be careful because it's very easy to get this injury on the shoulder. The main problem is when usually you do the serves, it's after you hit some balls, after you play and then you think, okay, I'm warmed up, I can go for the serves, right? But in reality, your shoulder and this motion is actually totally different from your regular forehand motion. So you gotta make sure you go through the actual serving motion. So again, I'm gonna start here, 
executive using the platform stance. here I'm slowly starting to kind of place my serves and I usually start with a wide serve I go for that slice wide it gives me a, a very nice feeling and a consistency of the serve good rhythm good flow so I always suggest that I start with some wide serves with a, with a good slice actually I'm gonna hit a few more with a platform stance but I can go a little bit more loose but still kind of easy serves first one in the net So at this point, I will slowly start going into the pinpoint stance. If you ask me why I do it, it's just a habit, I guess, and I feel this platform stance, it's a kind of transition, or it's uh, easier to start with, it's less aggressive for me, at least in my opinion, for the pinpoint, you, you really have to already kind of step in the jump. So I will slowly start with that, after I go to the platform stance, and still keep the wide serve. And one more thing, I would always place some targets, so let me do that quickly, I'm gonna make sure I have some target there. So, usually I use tennis ball as a target, but this sometimes takes a long time to hit and maybe it's not so interesting, so for the sake of this video, I put these tiny cones there, four on each side, the one target is wide, the one target is T, I'm gonna go wide first and I might not hit, I don't know, but just for fun, you know, maybe it can be more interesting. So, I'm still serving around 30-40%, still in the process of getting loose, warm up. Okay, maybe that's like 40%, but I need to keep it easy. There is one! Let's go, I'm gonna keep going wide. So another important thing when you do your serves is the, the target and the placement of your serves and I recommend that you always pick one target and commit to that target for, for some time. It can be either time based, you can go 10-15 minutes only one corner or based on you know hitting the target. If it happens so quickly like this one, I would definitely go a bit longer, the same target. The point is that you get consistency you know, in terms of going for one spot and you get a certain number of serves going close to the target, then you get the right feeling. Then, then you kind of know, okay, I got this spot, let's say on the wide serve, if I hit maybe 15, 20 more very precise serves, I would feel good, okay, let's go, let's switch to the other target, which is in this case down the tee. So I'm gonna go for a few more wide serves. Oops, it's a bit off, I'm gonna find it. I'm still, it's there, it's very close. I almost feel it, but I need to make sure that it's consistent. Yeah. I need a couple in a row, good serves. Some mistakes here. But the thing is that you always need to have something that you're working on your serve apart from placement, consistency, a certain element that you know you need to improve because everybody has something on the serve that you can improve. So in my case, it's a little bit the rhythm, the timing, and I also worked on that racket drop. I try to make it less of this open, you know, racket face drop. So it's a very long process for me. I feel it's slowly, slowly getting there, but I have to think about it and it's a little bit affecting my serve percentage and precision so I also work with that together with trying to find the rhythm yeah still searching it 
Let's go. I'm gonna go for a few more. Now I'm slowly increasing the pace. It's still super light, sir. Just looking for the percentage and the placement. I would say 50-60% max. 60% maybe. And a little bit. Let it go. So now I basically have just one cone there in the white spot, the red cone because I hit I think the middle one and then the ball the bouncing of the ball hit the other cone so now very tough target but I'll try. It's a challenge. I like it. So now 65, 87%. two more and then I want to change the angle of the camera and outside come on Woo. so lost a little bit lost the consistency here so, come on. Obviously, I didn't manage to hit the red cone, but in general, that will be the process. And uh, basically, if I have time, I would I would keep going until I get this target. So I would recommend that you don't give up, you know, you don't stop. You get it done, get your target, knock it down, and uh, then then that's when you're gonna feel that's when you're gonna feel amazing. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, then I would change to the other corner T, but uh, this time I think it's enough for you guys to understand the process and hope you like it. If so, smash that like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow us on all the other social media platforms and uh, listen to our podcast. And that's it pretty much. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you soon in our next video.